I'm Keith. I'm uh, the co-founder and CEO of Big Door. Big Door is a platform that powers gamified loyalty programs. So I wanted to, to start out with a little poll, if you can, uh, if you can uh, do that with me and, and uh, entertain me here for a second. So I want to know how many people in the audience are fans of gamification and think it has a big, bright future? Raise your hands. All right, good. A few. OK, how many are very skeptical of gamification and think it's overhyped, to be honest? Tell me. Not a one? Oh, wow, that's fantastic. Oh, good. Thank you. Finally, we have somebody who's a dissenting opinion. Well, I think generally speaking at this conference, there's probably a few dissenting opinions like that. Uh, they probably are in the other tracks, it's quite possible. Uh, but uh, it's, uh, you know, hopefully we can find some common ground. And, and I also like to actually address those, uh, those dissenting opinions. I thought I'd tell a little story here that, that kind of illustrates that point. This is my son, Bennett. He is, uh, I may be biased, but I think he's one of the coolest 10-year-old kids in the world. And uh, he also happens to be, because he's 10, he still happens to tell the truth a fair amount. And uh, the other day, this was last week, he and I were standing in line in this busy area. And, and I looked down, and he's looking up at me with these loving eyes and these very inquisitive, this inquisitive look. And I thought, isn't it great to have you know, somebody who, just, who, who respects me and looks up to me like this? Isn't this fantastic? And we kind of stared at each other for a minute. And, I thought, we're really having a moment here. This is great. And he finally breaks the silence in a very loud voice. He says, hey, Dad, you have a booger coming out of your mouth, out of your nose. Sorry, <laughs> out of your nose. And, uh, and so, of course, I you know, go, do you really need to say that so loudly? And he just kind of shrugs. And he says, well, you know, it might be time to release the Kraken, Dad. That's all I'm saying. So there's my 10-year-old son who speaks the truth. And uh, yeah, I tell you that story to kind of illustrate the point that, that sometimes the, uh, the perspective that we have and, and the view that we have and what we think is reality is not always actually reality. And hopefully, uh, as we address and talk about gamification and we talk about some of the things that are good about gamification, some of the things I think that are challenging about gamification, we can find some common ground there. This is my daughter. Again, I might be biased, but she's the, uh, the sweetest 14-year-old on the planet. And I might add that 14-year-olds that uh, set a relatively low bar when it comes to sweetness. Um, but uh, she's a, a fantastic girl, and she helped me really kind of define my early views about gamification. When she started two years ago, she started playing this, this game, Sorority Life. Uh, anybody in here had the misfortune of playing that game? Anybody in here happened to work on that game? Oh, sorry, ignore what I'm going to say for a minute. I apologize in advance. So, uh, so Sorority Life is what I would describe as every father's complete nightmare. Uh, here, my, my 12 year old daughter at the time, she's playing this game and she's getting virtual coins. Uh, she's using those virtual, the virtual currency to fill her virtual closet. Uh, she is buying virtual boyfriends. Uh, she periodically smacks down and beats up her sorority sisters who are weaker than her so that she can take their virtual shit and you know, put it into her own closet. I guess it's uh, preparation for the real world is kind of what the, uh, the, the, the strategy of this game. But it was very addicting. It was very well done, actually. And, and she, of course, needed her daily hit of sorority life. And she would come back and, and use this Facebook game on a regular basis. Still does, actually. So around the same time, I, my brother was getting ready to adopt his third child and his first daughter. And so I kind of felt out of, out of just uh, uh, duty. I probably need to warn him about what he had to look forward to a dozen years from now. So I was telling him about this experience and about sorority life and about this game. And he's this very cynical. He's, uh, he was about 44 at the time, very cynical guy. He's a CTO, co-founder of a local tech company. And he's just rolling his eyes and thinking this is absolutely horrible. And a couple minutes later, as our conversations usually do, we turned our conversation to technology. And he was telling me that he had been spending a lot of time recently on the site Stack Overflow. And he's on Stack Overflow, and he would ask questions and answer questions and do this so he could get points, and he could get badges, and he could build up his credibility, and uh, of course look better amongst all of his other geek friends, and periodically smack down a weaker geek when, uh, when they needed to be smacked down. And it was, it was then that I really realized that, that here's my brother playing sorority life, and he just didn't know it. And those same game mechanics that were incredibly powerful to my 12-year-old daughter were really the same exact game mechanics in many ways that were being very, very effective to somebody who is absolutely at the opposite end of the demographic spectrum. And it was 
that kind of that early realization that there are there are game mechanics uh, and there are some some basic fundamentals that work extremely well in social gaming that really have a place to be applied in a much wider context to a lot of other uh, uh, scenarios and a lot of other digital communities and they can have a, a really significant impact. So uh, so fast forward two years later so current time here. Big Door, we founded Big Door, we started developing Big Door, we've learned a lot of lessons. Uh, we've raised $5.7 million so far from what I think are the, the greatest VCs in the world. Uh, we have, uh, we currently power game mechanics and, and loyalty programs for over 300 different companies. We've transacted over 4 billion virtual currency points. We've sold 4 million virtual goods. Uh, we've rewarded 260 million different user actions. And we've, uh, we've also given out $5.5 million, million badges and, and 1.3 million. I should actually update that uh, as of this morning. It's 1.4 million uh, total badges just on MLB.com, which is one of our, our larger partners that we power gamification for. So we've been busy. Uh, we're certainly still, I think, at the early stages, uh, but we have a lot of, uh, of, of traction, and we work with a lot of really great companies. So I thought it would be good to look at one of those companies in particular. The, the company, uh, oh, actually, sorry, one other uh, uh, comment here is that we have a lot of different verticals. Uh, so verticals from e-commerce, news and information, uh, uh, the professional sports league that I mentioned. Uh, but it's been a, a wide swath and a lot of different categories and a lot of different verticals. And that's been a real surprise to us because we really didn't see that there would be that many different types of companies that would be interested in gamification. And we happen to be in the happy spot where where people are coming to us and they are seeking us out. We don't have to do any outbound marketing currently. Uh, gamification as a concept has really started to take hold and we've seen it just by the diversity of the different companies that are, that are approaching us. Um, we've also launched, two months ago, we launched the latest iteration of our platform. It's not yet publicly available, but we call it the engagement economy. And so far, the results have been absolutely astonishing uh, in terms of the ability to, to really uh, drive user behavior and really engage users. So uh, some early numbers uh, on a monthly basis, uh, we are seeing seven quests per user. So kind of directed engagement quests that users are taking within our, our gamification platform, 21 shares and 25 viral referrals per daily active user uh, over a month long period of time. So really amazing results. I love it when I hear people say that virality is dead uh, because we certainly know that it is not dead. So a use case, uh, I wanted to dive into Sparts Network and Sparts, has anybody heard of Sparts Network or Sparts Inc? I kind of assumed that that would be the case because they are, uh, they're a little known company that is growing very, very rapidly. Uh, a little bit of, of detail about them, some background. They have about 2.8 million monthly active users. They have 16 different sites. They're, they're primarily user-generated content type sites and they over-index to teenage females. So, uh, so they, they certainly have a, a wider demographic than that, but that's the kind of their, their target audience for the majority of their sites. Um, when they came to us, they said, and we, we started talking to them about uh, about seven weeks ago or so uh, when we first started talking with them. And, and what they told us was there are some real key metrics that we really want to zero in on. They're very metrics focused. And so the, as we started talking to them and we really kind of uh, you know, narrowed down with the things that they're looking at, what they laid out for us was that they first of all care about users just coming back. Users have to be there in order for any other engagement to work, so we need to figure out a reason and give users a reason to be coming back and coming back on a regular basis. Secondly, we want them to engage and we want them, in many cases, to be contributing content, but we also want them to be diving deeper into content that already exists, as well as being cross-promoted across their various 16 sites. So engaging them, but engaging them in activities that they thought would be useful for the user at their particular stage, as well as just activities that were going to be important to the network and to the overall community and things that were going to specifically drive revenue for the company. Uh, third is virality, making sure that they were rewarding users for sharing, for liking, for tweeting, but not just for the act of sharing, liking, tweeting, because that's just scratching the surface. The, really, the important piece is to make sure that we could reward users for the clicks that were happening off of those, those shares, as well as then the signups, the eventual signups that users would, uh, uh, would take from, those, uh, from clicking on those shares, and also the analytics underneath that to be able to understand who are the most influential users in their network. 
and ultimately revenue. They, of course, monetize uh, their, their audience primarily with advertising, so they wanted us to be able to support their existing revenue model and hopefully be able to provide additional incremental revenue for them. So those are the, the KPIs that they cared about. In terms of the need, in terms of the things that they absolutely needed from us was they wanted a reward center. They, they, uh, they want to be able to provide rewards to users and allow users to be able to select the rewards that they wanted. Some of those are virtual, some of it is access to premium content, and some of it is, uh, is, was actually tangible items. Uh, items that were, in many cases, branded for the company or for the site, uh, but things that, that users could actually get that were tangible. Uh, of course, in order to feed a reward center, they, they wanted a virtual currency uh, that would actually enable those microtransactions. And then this idea, again, of directed engagement, the ability to actually direct users towards uh, activities and areas of the site and content that were actually important to the company. And then, of course, constraints. Uh, every, every partner that we talk to has significant constraints, and these seem to be three that are, that are relatively consistent. It is, it is we have no money, uh, or at least that we want to spend on this experiment. Uh, we, we don't have time to devote to it, and, and we certainly uh, don't have dev resources. We, we, don't have, we have developers who are busy, and they have 18 months' worth of existing projects that they're working on. We can't afford to pull them off and have them work on this, uh, yet it's really important to us. So this is a relatively... Uh, a relatively standard set of, of, of KPIs, needs, and constraints that we hear from a lot of our partners. And I think it's probably pretty typical uh, of, of most sites. So let's take a look at, at some of this uh, actually uh, implemented and see what it actually looks like. Uh, they, have, they are currently in beta uh, across their 16 sites with our, with our gamification uh, and our loyalty program, but they will be launching it publicly uh, before the end of the month. So this is kind of a sneak peek and an early view of what that looks like. So starting off with virtual currency, here's a notification uh, that a user would get yeah, when they have uh, either leveled up or they've earned a significant amount of virtual currency. The user can, of course, decide wh how they want these notifications to come so it doesn't have to be uh, obtrusive and, and be in their way if they don't want it to be. But in this case, they're being notified that they're getting uh, 50 coins uh, and that they are also uh, have just received a badge. So, so they're receiving both something that they're going to be able to uh, use to be re you know, redeeming in a, in a reward center as well as getting that status within the community. Another screenshot here, you can see just kind of subtly right underneath the, uh, the right-hand uh, menu item there is, is a, a little animated drop-down that, uh, that, that tells the user they've checked in. And so in this case, a user can check into each of the 16 sites on a daily basis. And so again, giving users that, that regular reason to come back, a real reason to come back and check in every single day and, and get their daily bonus. And they can do it across all of their various sites. And of course, controlled and, and a, a flexible uh, frequency cap, so if they decide that they want to change that so that it's every four hours, or if they want to change it to every four days, easy to do, uh, but the idea is to be able to train users that it's important to come back on a regular basis. So the reward center, the, the, of course, you know, once you're earning this virtual currency, once you're getting virtual currency for taking these, these, these actions, as a user, what are you going to do with it? And so in this case, you can see a screenshot of, of the reward center. Uh, the, the items in the reward center, they, uh, they change on a regular basis. Uh, there are simple inventory controls and time constraints and, and even level constraints that, uh, that can be programmed for each item. Uh, but the idea is to have a, a variety of different items for users, some of them tangible. You can see t-shirts uh, that are in there. Uh, some of them are, are tangible, but they're, uh, they're cheaper items, things like stickers, etc., that can actually be sent to them. And some are just access to premium content. So content that maybe that other people can't get access to, or even early access to content that is, uh, that is highly sought after by the community. So all things that are relevant to the community, all things that are relevant to the user experience, uh, all things that have a high perceived va value for their users. Uh, and so now all of a sudden this becomes a very, very tangible carrot that users are seeing uh, that they can use their virtual currency to spend on. So here's directed, uh, an example of directed user engagement. One of the things that we continue to hear over and over again is just that, that, uh, that giving users points uh, and giving users badges for actions that they're taking isn't enough there's really a need to be able to have a very, very flexible way to direct users towards behaviors, actions, uh, content, 
uh, within the site that is important for the site owner. And so in this case, what we see is we see an example of the yellow bar at the bottom, which is the quest bar that is taking the user on a particular quest that the user has chosen to go on, and they're experimenting and, and, uh, and experiencing new content. And in this case, they're being directed to see a video. And there's this light box effect that's highly configurable that can be kind of directing the user towards a specific area of the site that, uh, that they should be going to. Uh, you can see the little guide me on the bottom right-hand corner there. Uh, the user clicked on that in this case, and the guide me is what created that light box effect and guides the user towards this activity that they should be taking. If the activity is an obvious activity, then they don't necessarily need the guide me, and they can go right to it. But it's, it's really teaching users how to fish rather than just giving them a fish. And, and now the users are experiencing content, and they're experiencing how to get access to that content so they'll know how to do it in the future. And this is an example of, of what it looks like when a user goes off and visits a third-party site when they're in the middle of a quest. So sponsored quests are a really, really important part of our overall platform because it is the, one of the key things that will inject new dollars and new revenue streams into, uh, into a virtual economy. And so in this case, a user is going on a quest. Uh, one of the checkpoints on the quest involved them going off to a third-party site. They go off to the third-party site, and you can still see the consistent bar that is at the bottom. Uh, and what happens now is that a user is interacting with an advertiser generate, generating revenue for the site, uh, but they are not actually leaving the site because when they're done interacting with that third-party site, they'll come back to the Sparts site that they left from, uh, and they will now get their coins when they come back, and they can then continue to, uh, to interact with Sparts. So it's a great way for them to be able to bring in their advertisers, get their advertisers involved in the, in the user's behavior and the user's actions without actually losing that user and losing the attention. And of course, what they're really doing is then building up long-term equity value with that user because the user is getting more virtual currency. And then final screenshot I'll show you is, uh, it's, it's tough to read probably from a distance there, but uh, with every link that is shared, whether it's liked, whether it's shared, whether it's tweeted, uh, there is, uh, uh, each of those are of course tracked by our system and, uh, and each, uh, um, each user is given credit then of course for the amount of influence that they have based on the people who are clicking on those links and ultimately the people who are signing up and registering off of those links. So, so if, uh, if somebody has, has liked a, uh, a piece of content on, on the site, I happen to see that on Facebook, I click on that link, I would be greeted if I was a, not a registered user for a Spart site, I would be greeted with this message, which says that Rebecca shared this, uh, this link, and I was referred here by Rebecca, and that if I sign up now, I will get 50 coins, and Rebecca will also get 50 coins. So it's a great way for Rebecca to be able to feel good about, uh, about tapping into her social graph, because she knows that not only is she going to get a referral bonus, but the person that, re that signs up also gets the same exact bonus. And when I come, I'm actually greeted by a friendly face and somebody that I recognize, creating trust with, uh, with me and with the website. And we see fantastic results off of, off of these kinds of notifications. So this is a great lead into just kind of a general look at, since we're talking about strategy today and overall gamification strategy, uh, a look at, at our framework and kind of how we view gamification. Uh, and, and you can kind of see how we came up with the solutions that we did for, for Sparts. So where we start with any gamification uh, implementation is, is, and we feel very strongly about this, is that, that it, it has to, a good implementation has to start with the user in mind first. And it's, and it's amazing to me how often uh, this, this topic gets lost in, uh, in strategy sessions because we start talking about the things that we want, the metrics that we want to move, the things that we care about, and we lose sight of what's actually in it for the user. Uh, and of course, I think one of the things that, that game developers historically have been fantastic at is keeping in mind what actually matters for the user. So in this case, you know, we, we look at, at rewards and the things that users can get from uh, interacting with a site uh, that, that feels very genuine, feels very authentic, uh, and also feels like it's very, very much a part of the existing community. Uh, and, and certainly tangible rewards is a very, very important piece of that, but status and access and power are also very important ways to reward a user, and there's a lot of discussion about intrinsic versus extrinsic uh, reward systems and which is better, and we feel strongly that, that a combination of both has an incredible impact on user behavior, and, it's, uh, and, and we have some unique and, and, uh, and creative ways to make sure that you can have complete control over what the costs are and, and what the potential liabilities will be. Uh, we also uh, have, have spent a lot of time uh, working on making sure that, that from a policy, regulation standpoint, et cetera, 
that uh, that there isn't a burden on our on our partners to have to manage and deal with all of the nuances that come with a, a virtual currency like this. So, uh, so having an underlying virtual currency is incredibly important, but having that be just a foundation that then ultimately means really interesting, really valuable rewards for users. So second piece to this is then that directed user engagement uh, mechanic and, and the ability to have a flexible system that, that is easy to manage, that allows site owners and community owners to be able to direct users towards things that are important. And, and if I'm a first time user and I come to a site, I need to be, I need to be onboarded appropriately and uh, in a way that's not going to be annoying, in a way that's not going to get in my way, but a way that's going to actually tell me the things that are important here. But if it's my hundredth time back and I'm, I'm obviously an active sharer and I'm really involved in this site, I'm going to be expecting a different kind of quest than if, uh, if it was my 10th time here and on my 10th time I had already demonstrated that I was a great content contributor. So, so depending on the state of the user, depending on the type of user, uh, an ability to be able to direct that user towards things that are going to be interesting to them and of course valuable ultimately to the site owner. So after uh, you, you start being able to direct that user engagement, again, looking at the KPIs and looking at the things that are actually really important, frequency being, being uh, extremely important, uh, the ability to get users back, and, uh, and of course then engaging them in the things that matter to you on the site, virality, which we've talked about and shown some examples of, and then ultimately tapping into that revenue model, the existing revenue model that already exists on the site, whether it's e-commerce, whether it's subscription, whether it's advertising, being able to support that. And one of the things, or I guess I'd say two of the things that we consistently hear from our partners when we talk to them about what it is that they want, it's two pretty simple things when you boil it all down. It's, I want more traffic and I want more money. And, and we really focus on KPIs that, of course, are going to deliver that. So let me leave you with this. We've, we're, again, talking about strategy. So, uh, so I'll leave you with, with a dozen kind of keys to think about when you think about strategy around gamification. So first of all, one of the things that we consistently hear is dev resources are scarce. And so uh, there are folks, there are platforms that, uh, that have already gone through a lot of the heavy lifting for gamification. So you don't need to apply precious dev resources if you're going to gamify. So the first bit of advice I'd give you is, is start with an existing gamification platform. There's several that are out there. Look at us all. And and, and, uh, and use somebody who has already developed and already done all this heavy lifting. Second thing is rapid deployment really matters. Uh, you know, you shouldn't have to take three to six months to launch a, a gamification strategy on your site. Uh, you should be able to launch quickly, learn, and iterate. Seamless user login, authentication is key, making sure that, that a user is not confused by having to log into your site and then log into some sort of rewards site uh, or rewards program. It just doesn't make any sense. Being able to tap into the existing authentication that already exists for your site, or if one doesn't exist, being able to, to use and enable social logins seamlessly without you having to do any work. That, that user experience is really critical around authentication. Uh, ownership of your data, make sure that, that any platform that you're working with uh, allows you to own your data. We like to call it the, the uh, ball and bat switch. So if you want to take your ball and bat and go home, you should be able to do so. You should be able to suck all your data out, and it should be your data. Uh, the other thing I'd say is don't, don't sign long-term contracts. Gamification is a brand new category. It's a brand new space. We're all learning. We're all improving. We're all figuring these things out. So you shouldn't go out and sign a six or 12 month contract at this point in time with somebody who's unproven, uh, who, who you don't know if they're actually gonna have a big impact on your business. So don't sign long-term contracts. Uh, the other thing I'd say is, is don't sign up for a lot of, of fees. Uh, you know, paying money uh, for something that is unproven just generally doesn't make a whole lot of sense. If you can work with somebody on a rev share, you can work with somebody who, where, where their success is tied to your success, that generally makes a lot more sense. Uh, again, that directed user engagement, which we've talked about, be, being able to direct users. Uh, and then the focus on the metrics that actually matter. So, you know, looking fun, looking cool, looking fuzzy is great. What you really need to care about is what are the key metrics that, and what, what is uh, going to move the needle for those key metrics. Uh, the the built-in referrals uh, program that I talked about and referenced, the ability to be able to uh, to to have users re be referred, given special messages, uh, being able to be uh, to bonused and rewarded for those efforts is really really important. Uh, and looking at overall at gamification as a profit center, not as a cost center. And this really goes back to the, my prior point about, uh, about upfront fees. Upfront fees don't make a lot of sense. Uh, gamification shouldn't be a big expense. It should be something that is ultimately making your site or your community money. Uh, 
I talked a little bit about the fact that you know a system should be easy to implement, uh, should be seamless, uh, should should be able to be implemented quickly. At the same time, being able to have something that is open, uh, that is flexible. So if you do want to have custom development on top of what is already there, that's really really important. Uh, all of our JavaScript widgets, as an example, are open sourced. Uh, our underlying API is completely available, and all of our JavaScript widgets are built in our API. So having the ability to customize on top of an existing program is also really important. And then last point I'll make here is, is, that, is that any implementation like this really does need to be more than just badges and leaderboards. Leaderboards can be actually can have a negative impact on, on user behavior. And so just having an extra activity stream and a leaderboard that shows up on a site doesn't make a lot of, uh, a lot of difference and it, and it can actually have a negative impact. Thinking about this holistically as a loyalty and engagement kind of uh, activity is the kind of thing I think that can make gamification actually meaningful for your site. So that's all I got. Sorry, I ran through those last uh, real quick. But if there's any questions, I think I have time for a few. Yes, go ahead. Yell it out, and I'll repeat it. Yeah, yes, please. So if I. Uh, if I if I heard you right, like how how would the game mechanics differ for a like a, a gaming company specifically versus a, a non gaming company or a non gaming site? Yeah, like someone in a totally different industry or something. Sorry, to say it in the mic there, I couldn't quite. Yeah, like something someone in a totally different industry, like music or news or something of that nature. So so we don't focus on on gaming companies. We our platform, while we have found that some game uh, uh, games have been built using our platform, that's really not our specialty. So we focus on exactly what you're talking about. Uh, we work with with uh, with music sites. We work with uh, entertainment sites. We work with uh, with e-commerce sites. We work with uh, uh, with uh, e even uh, PC man large PC manufacturers. Uh, so a wide variety of of non-game sites, and and that's where our platform is really focused and specializes. Does that? Sort to answer your question. Yeah, hi. You had a, a bullet point there about the focus on the metri metrics that matter. What would be the top five metrics that matter to you? So th the the ones that that I had kind of mentioned there, which is frequency, the engagement, virality, and and revenue. Those are are generally boiled up metrics. But what we try to do is is have a, uh, a, a single number that represents each one of those four categories or those four, four KPI categories uh, so that you can see easily kind of over time how you're trending in each one of those categories. Now, underneath that, there's a lot of, of, of underlying data and a lot of underlying analytics that you can dive deeper into. But we're big believers in trying to make uh, data and analytics actionable. So those are our big four. Those are the ones that we focus on a lot. And we think it encompasses the vast majority of, of the things that, that gamification and loyalty programs should really be moving the needle for. So how do we measure them? Uh, it takes, it's, a, it's a longer discussion, but, but if you look at revenue as an example, it's, it's ARPU. The way we look at frequency is we look at frequency as, as a uh, daily active uh, percentage of your monthly active users. Uh, engagement is a little bit unique, and it's a little bit unique on, uh, based on community. Uh, and so that's, that's kind of a unique one. Uh, but by virality, we look at K factor, and we focus on, on, the, on what is the actual K factor, and is this something that can continue to be viral based on the activity that you're seeing currently. So that's kind of the quick answer to each of those. Happy to dive into those deeper, though, and talk about them. We done? All right. Thank you, everybody. I appreciate it.